So our first poll, which is going to be up here in a second, as we wait for the Lord to pull it up here. Oh, here it comes. And it is using Common Core in lesson planning. So are you currently incorporating Common Core in your lesson planning? We'll give everyone about 30 seconds to go through here and uh, give us some answers. Numbers are slowly tiling up. So it looks like we have overwhelmingly yes. Yes, we have people using Common Core in their lesson planning. So that's good because we are going to be talking uh, a little bit here about Common Core. And everything we're going to be doing today um, is does revolve around Common Core standards. So our next poll coming up is going to be how are you incorporating Common Core in your classroom? Uh, we've put a couple different options here. Uh, and just to sort of give you an idea of why we put these options up, um, these are all parts of um, the lesson plan or lessons that we're going to be talking about today. So it gives you a little bit of a teaser for what we're going to be doing. So we have collaborative learning, uh, having students use evidence from text to support analysis of primary and secondary sources, asking students to write arguments focused on discipline specific contents, asking students to determine the meaning of words and phrases as they used as they're used in a text including vocabulary specific to history and social studies or other and if you have if you choose other please on the comment section on the chat section on the left um, give us some ideas wow I see a lot of collaborative learning that's great great let's see other things come anything coming up on the left here any other methods of common core learning So I see there's collaboration with Google Docs, presentations to stakeholders. Great. Using primary sources, Marianne um, is saying using primary sources to write research paper on the Civil War. Great. Those are great. Yeah, I, I personally, I love using Google Docs. Um, it's something that um, you, can, you can write collaboratively uh, together with people. All right, so we're going to be talking, again, everything, we're not going to drill into your head the entire time of this webinar about Common Core, but we did focus really on three um, specific uh, standards. Uh, site sp sp uh, specific textual evidence to support analysis of primary and secondary sources. Um, we're also going to um, focus on determining the central ideas or information of a primary or secondary source. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the Bill of Rights, obviously. Uh, providing an accurate summary of the source distinct from prior knowledge of our opinions. Um, and obviously determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including vocabulary specific to domains related to history and social studies. So we're going to see, um, once we look at the Bill of Rights, um, sort of this uh, alien from outer space or this visitor from outer space lesson helps uh, students to understand um, not only the meaning of, of the Bill of Rights, but also sort of the language and what it means. Great. Thanks, Keith. Um, so we're going to hop right into the lesson, Visitor from Outer Space. Um, it's one of our most popular lessons because it works both in elementary, middle, and high school. And again, we'll direct you to uh, the website at the end where you can uh, find a detailed lesson plan on how to use this in the classroom. But basically, it begins with a focused discussion on the rights, then moves to a PowerPoint where students uh, get a background content knowledge um, on the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Um, and then it moves into the actual activity where a visitor, where an alien comes and takes over um, the United States of America and students are forced to pick just five rights. Um, so with that, I think we're going to move into our focus discussion. So our focus discussion here, it's a poll, we're calling it a poll, it's really a short answer and um, we're asking you, what would society, what do you think society would look like without the idea of rights? And we're throwing that out there. Um, as you're going to see from the lesson, uh, a lot of the founders uh, did not think we needed a Bill of Rights. And there were 
plenty of examples of uh, popular governments. And you think of ancient Athenian democracy or a Roman Republic or some of the Renaissance societies where they didn't have, they had popular government but no, nothing like a Bill of Rights. So uh, if we could get some ideas of what you all think a society would look like without the idea of rights, or I should say what our modern society would look like without rights, and we'll give you maybe like a minute or two to think about that uh, and uh, hopefully provide us with some really cool answers. And that could be short, short answers. Ah, coming in. Great. Dictatorship, chaotic. I like these answers. Self-centered. I like that. Abuse of others. I think it's interesting that people put up here fascism and anarchy as you know, sort of two different possibilities. Um, have another discussion about the relationship maybe between those another day, but some interesting uh, choices here. Nasty, brutish, and short. I love the Hobbes quote. <laughs> Chaotic dictatorship. Any more? Maybe give this another uh, 10 seconds. How's that sound, Laura? Sounds good. Tyranny of the majority, another, uh, obviously these are all very good. Um, I, I like that it's a um, common theme that you see, um, you know, and it's interesting to talk to with students about. So thank you guys, thank you all, I should say, for um, some very good suggestions. Uh, and we're going to come back to that focus question uh, toward the end with one of our writing activities. Uh, but we're going to move in uh, to talking. We're going to go very quickly through the sort of background part of the lesson. Um, if you need us to stop or slow down, again, feel free to uh, chime in in the uh, in the chat section. Um, you know, we're not here to sort of teach you what we're, what you go through with the students, uh, but we do want to go through the background and give you an idea of of what the background material looks like um, for then um, doing the uh, visitor from outer space um, part of the activity. So, I'm going to start quickly. Imagine that America was suddenly a kingdom with one supreme ruler, the king. Again, the idea here is just to establish a sort of modern context for students to understand the, you know, what the revolutionary period looked like. You know, so we have a king of America now, but obviously we're talking about the revolutionary period. Um, again, just taking the, you know, the examples and talking about it in a modern context, you know, police officers and soldiers having the right to enter search homes and businesses whenever they feel it's necessary without any uh, limitation on that. As Laura here is cl uh, clicking, clicking through uh, the PowerPoint, you'll see in sort of a use of technology or PowerPoint, it's, it's useful to be able to click through a one section of a, a slide at a time and um, it, it gives you a chance to, you know, break up your discussion. So anyways, we have, uh, again, here's some uh, descriptions of of the revolutionary uh, period and what it might look like in a modern context. And of course, the question, how do you like your new country? How do you think other Americans react to this king government? Um, you can have questions you can pose to students. And of course, now here we're jumping into um, comparing or letting students realize that we're talking about, um, thinking about the revolutionary period. Some cool graphics. And again, here we're setting up that the you know, revolutionary period, they did not want a, they had obviously problems with the king, uh, and they were not looking to uh, establish a new kingdom. They wanted to establish a new uh, type of government. Um, you know, we have forming a democratic, a modern democratic government hadn't been done before. Um, the colonial leaders, again, had to think, like, what would government look like? How should they um, put things together? And I think it's important for students to understand that the first attempt was a failure. Uh, I think a lot of people don't remember that. Uh, we have the Articles of Confederation. Uh, so we have a little bit of discussion here of the Articles of Confederation. Um, it was a situation where state governments obviously got more control. Uh, central governments 
the central government had less. Uh, and again, there was a great fear that the uh, British king would be would have too much power, or the similar situation in America that you had too much power centralized. And again, going through some of the problems. And here, again, the idea is to really set up for students that, uh, again, there was a failure in the, in the first setup of, of how we should establish the United States. Um, some of the things, you know, how do you pay soldiers? How do you collect the, the revenue to pay soldiers who'd fought in the war? Every state could print its own money. Uh, I think that's something that students could understand. That would be a difficult situation. So, you know, some other questions about war. How would we even manage another war? Uh, so really, again, the question becomes, like, how much power should the central government have? Like, how do we divvy up power between states and the central government? So obviously, you know, two of the big themes here. The first one is federalism. How do you divide power between central government and the states? Again, I know all of you know all of this already. So we're trying to flip through this quickly so we can get to the more fun part of the activity. Uh, then the, again, the other division of power, judicial, legislative, executive. Um, so we want to balance powers uh, you know, um, in the federal government, providing a series of checks and balances. And one more important question, how do you protect individual rights? Or even do we need to protect individual rights? And I think it's important for, you know, we think, I think, you know, we saw from your comments earlier that all of you, every single person actually thought that it, was, it seemed one way or another that rights were necessary, uh, that we would not have a better form of government without them. But I think it's important for, let, for letting students know that not all the founders thought that. Uh, again, there, again, you, you want to emphasize to students that there is debate about whether uh, we need a Bill of Rights. Some states had Bill of Rights already. Uh, and then some of the background, you know, James Madison, uh, obviously the Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, uh, writer of the Federalist Papers, uh, again, the most prominent argue, uh, arguments for the Constitution uh, and really a lot leading to its ratification. And none of them thought that we needed a Bill of Rights, at least at first. So, you know, and this might be, you know, some, it's obviously always valuable for students to see primary sources. Uh, Federalist papers are a great source of primary source documentation to use with students. Uh, our, our idea here, though, is really just to let students know the sort of background so that we can, again, get into real critical discussions of rights and what rights are important and what they mean. So Madison had a change of heart. Uh, he uh, came around to the idea that we needed a Bill of Rights. Uh, finally, Congress agreed. So Madison got to working on a Bill of Rights. And I think it's important, and this is an interesting discussion to have with students, you know, where did he come up with these ideas of rights? History, philosophy, discussions with other uh, prominent early Americans. So finally, we had uh, an addition, obviously, of the Bill of Rights to the Constitution, December 15th, 1791. And I, we apologize for, in the, uh, in the Adobe Connect uh, webinar here, obviously the pagination looks off. I can promise you, though, when we send you all this, uh, the regular PowerPoint, it looks perfectly OK. But again, we're going through some of the different uh, rights uh, in the Bill of Rights, you know, the First Amendment, religion, press, assembly and petition, right to bear arms, quartering of soldiers, search and seizure. You know, quickly going through, I don't need to paraphrase everything, but you can see, you know, there, you can have a discussion of all the various amendments uh, in the Bill of Rights. One of my favorite jury trial by civil case of at least $20. It's always useful to explain to students that $20 does not mean the same now as it meant back then. Uh, Ninth Amendment, Tenth Amendment, uh, again, Ninth Amendment, these are not the only rights that we have. Um, and of course, the Tenth Amendment, powers not delegated by the Constitution or reserved for the states and the people. Uh, the founders included in the Constitution a rule stating that it could be amended. I think that's important for students to understand. Um, this wasn't sort of 
The founders did not think everything was set in stone. Um, certainly we could add more and change things to the Constitution. Um, doesn't happen too much anymore. Um, but kind of moving forward in time here, we see some of the prominent uh, later amendments, uh, obviously outlawing slavery, and later uh, the 19th Amendment uh, giving women the right to vote. So of course, again here, this very quick background, the Constitution has been amended only 17 more times in the entire history. The end. So that's the background. Again, the background lessons have gone through obviously very, very quickly, um, but it establishes uh, the sort of the background the students are going to need to start to discuss um, or start to engage in our, the activity of Visitor from Outer Space. So now we're going to jump into the hands-on activity, and we'll see how that works here virtually with you all. I hope you all will participate. Um, so we're going to start setting up the activity of Visitor from Outer Space. So imagine it is the year 2025 and you're watching your wall-sized television when a special news bulletin comes on. The strange creature appears on the screen and informs you that it has taken over America. So you rapidly flip through all 500 channels and it appears on every channel and it says, Oh no! Attention, I am Siskar from the planet Nuxaku. Just as I have taken over television, I will take over your lives. But I come in peace. I realize that individual freedom means a great deal to American citizens. Therefore, I will take not take all of your rights. You have a choice. From a basic list of rights, you may choose to keep five. Think carefully before you vote, as all of your rights as citizens will end except for the ones you select. You will work with a group of other citizens to decide, and your decisions must be unanimous. Failure to reach a unanimous decision will result in the termination of all rights. The list of choices will now appear on the screen. Wow, that alien was scary. Well, if you don't have your own alien, we have our alien provided to you in the PowerPoint. Um, it actually comes with uh, sound, but we're not uh, showing that right now. Alien will repeat exactly what our real life alien had told you. And here we are the instructions. Again, you get a list of basic rights and you must choose only five. If you can't come to a unanimous decision, then unfortunately all your rights will be terminated. So we're going to show you a list of your rights. And if you're doing this with students, you're going to want to go through each of the rights and um, talk with them briefly to make sure they understand uh, before they begin their group discussions. Um, just a small note, you'll notice that um, the, the numbers do not necessarily correspond um, with the rights in the Bill of Rights. So for example, the right to bear arms is not uh, the First Amendment. But those are what we have um, outlined for you today. There's actually 11 of them. So we're going to start right now with just your gut feeling of what you feel are your top five rights. If you could only pick five, what, what, what five would you pick? So take about, I guess, 30 seconds to a minute. And again, everyone should choose five. All right, looks like we have some movement still going on here. Not seeing a lot of love for our protection from self-incrimination. Or right to a lawyer. So sad. Just, just so you all know, Laura here is a lawyer, so she's going to be very offended uh, if not more people pick that. I'll be out of a job. Great. So does everyone pick their top five? Let's see. Help me out here. So we have number two. We have number four. It looks like we have number seven. And number nine, are those our top ones? And number 11. 11 is the, the biggest one here. 
All right, so it looks like we have our poll. So now we're going to see what that looks like. So I'm going to move these. So we got rid of the right to bear arms. Nobody likes the right to bear arms, but we'll move that one. Okay, and then instead we're going to put equal protection up here. These are the rights we're going to keep. And number nine, which is right to privacy. That's always a good one. Okay. Oh, that's eight. Right to peacefully assemble. Whoops. Nobody wants that. All right, let's move the right to peacefully assemble. Assemble here. Oops, just one minute. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Well, I know right to a lawyer is not in the top five. All right, we'll take off the right to the lawyer. Okay, what are we missing? The right to protect from cruel and unusual punishment. Did that make the top? Yes, it did. The right to free press did not make the top, so we'll have to move the right to the free press. They're not seeing this, so. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I think we'll go back to the poll, since you weren't able to see our share. Um, it looks like then let's write these down. We have the right to free speech made it to the top. This is your last chance to vote. The right against cruel and unusual punishment. Seven, the right to free religion. Nine, right to privacy. And 11, equal protection. Equal protection. All right, so we didn't have the first amendment with the free speech. So let's see, does any, let's move this picture up here. So what are the results? What happens without the freedom of speech? Oh, it looks like without that, uh, aliens have imposed the thought police upon all of you. So it looks like you've had too much to think um, the alien thought police uh, don't want you to speak out of a question. Um, we're hoping to, again, encourage you to, to reconsider any of the rights that you thought you could dispose of, uh, such as, uh, again, free speech, which, again, the result, we have our alien overlords uh, engaging us with the thought police. So you can use the, the left-hand chat bar. It looks like you did say free speech was your was one of the ones that you wanted. Oh, so that's that one of the ones we wanted. Mistake. Oh. oh, so you don't have the thought police. All right. They don't. But what about the right, let's see, what about self-incrimination? Can we put that one up? Yes. Uh-oh. So you all thought that you didn't need the right, you didn't need Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination. So poor Gonzo here is probably going to confess to anything because he doesn't have that Fifth Amendment right. Does anyone want to make an argument in the chat bar, or we can, I guess, unmute you. We could try that, but um, maybe the chat bar uh, of why the Fifth Amendment uh, might be a good one to keep. Oh, interesting. Cruel and unusual covers that. Hmm. Although that cruel and unusual would probably only stretch to punishment. Right now we're trying to get, uh, police would be trying to get a confession out of you. So, so they're not quite using the power drill on Gonzo yet. Slide is not showing. <laughs> cruel and unusual covers that. Just curious, do you guys see Gonzo on there with the, the Muppet with the power drill? All right, perfect. All right, so I don't hear any great arguments for keeping the fist, so I think we'll get rid of the Fifth Amendment then. So it looks like the aliens are going to be torturing Gonzo. <laughs> what about free press? Did we say that we lawyer. had lawyer? I'm going to put lawyer? Right to a lawyer. A lot of you did not like to have that right. So this will be the person who'll decide all of your uh, trials, whether civil or criminal. You will not 
uh, have a lawyer there to represent you. What do we think? Does anyone want a lawyer? I think we had one or two people say that that was okay. Does anyone want to make an argument of why it needs to be in your top five? It's not that we don't want it. We could just only choose five. That's fair. All right. Bye, lawyer. What about free press? I didn't see. I see that we had free speech, but we didn't include free press. So we can talk. We just can't print it or uh, post on the internet, it seems like. I think we have a nice little graphic to go with that. Well, we have a new newspaper in our new nation, and this is the only press that the aliens allow us to have. So welcome to the new alien press. So you can speak all you want, but the only press we have, the only media we have, is the new alien weekly world news, which actually growing up was probably my favorite newspaper to see at the, at the supermarket. Unfortunately, now in a business, but I thought this was an appropriate version of our alien press. It says press and someone, Michelle has said that press and information is the most important, um, even though they write maybe not, don't always do uh, their job the way they should, but they are very important. I think there's a good comment here. I've come not to trust a lot of what I read anyway, and I think that's true, but the, I, I think, you know, we should think about even having it out there. Can you, if it doesn't even exist, how can you even critically assess uh, whether it's something that you should you know, trust or believe in anyways? All right, so we had a couple arguments for, for keeping free press. Let's see, what else do we have? Bear arms. Bear arms. Nobody wanted to have the right to bear arms. That only got seven votes. Well, that's fine. We won't bear arms, but then we have to be prepared for this. Godzilla is going to come take over our city and we won't be able to defend ourselves because we don't have any arms. Anyone have response of why they didn't choose the right to bear arms or why we should include the right to bear arms in our top five? <laughs> Won't the aliens protect us? Well, <laughs> I, that's a good point. Uh, I think Godzilla and the aliens uh, must be friends. Uh, bear, Michelle added, bearing arms is also critical because that is the first thing dictators take away. That's right, to wave control people by not allowing them to have a way to defend themselves. And again, yes, Lily, you're right, Libby, you're right. We could only choose five, and it was really hard. All right. I doubt arms could stop Godzilla anyways. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, that is true. Sometimes it takes a giant moth. So we didn't choose right to assemble. So we have free speech, but we aren't we don't have free press, so we can't spread that speech around. And then we can't gather in groups because we don't have um, the right to assemble. Does anyone want to to make an argument of maybe why we might want to include um, the right to assemble in, into our top five? I hear this is not a pick of assembly. I think this is a pick of what happens when you don't have the right to assemble. Um, people don't have a chance to peacefully, talk, peacefully assemble, um, the results can be quite negative. Kind of stretched on that one. You're right there, Colleen. <laughs> it's not peaceful assembly. You're right. It was more of a picture of what could happen if we, if we don't give citizens the right to peacefully assemble. It's the aftermath. All right, so... I actually think it's a good picture because if you look back in history, you do see uh, this is a common result of what happens when government tries to limit people's ability to assemble. So I think our last one that we decided we didn't necessarily need was the right to a jury. Um, apparently we want to trust our judge who's appointed by the aliens, mind you, to make all of the decisions in our legal cases. and I'm sure the aliens can, can convince him with a little bit of money of uh, how to persuade the argument. So we're not going to have a jury of our peers. We're going to have our judge decide everything. We're all good with that? I'm just going to jump back to some, com some good comments coming up here. Uh, this could mean that we couldn't even assemble to practice our religion. I think that's a good point. And I think one of the things that uh, students should be getting out of these lessons is a there's a lot of um, interconnectivity between our rights. And that's one of the things that you want to see students forced to discuss. Well, 
I think that's about it. We're not going to come, well, we're not going to come to a unanimous decision because of how this is laid out, but we do appreciate you participating and providing um, uh, your opinions about which five rights you would take. Um, traditionally, let's see, if we were doing this, let me, hmm? Sorry, we're only whispering because we're like, is there any more comments that we need to, uh, or we should discuss here? Again, thank you for all your comments. They are very, uh, very good. So if you were doing this in a classroom, it would it work obviously very differently. Um, you would place the students in small groups, probably groups of about five students, and provide them with strips of paper with the different rights on them. And then they would be able to move those around to figure out which would be their top five rights. There would be a lot of discussion, a lot of back and forth. Some people would agree, not to agree, not uh, disagree. So there's a lot of persuasion involved, a lot of negotiating. Well, I'll give you this right if you give me that right. Because again, the overall goal is that they're supposed to reach a unanimous decision. And I think that's often very difficult. Um, now, you will always have that one group of students who in the first two minutes of the activity have decided they've got their five rights, we're done. Um, By the way, uh, you were you're right over the, is it ha Haven? Uh, you do, we're not unanimous, so yes, you lose all your rights. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> sadly the result. <laughs> yes, so this activity is done in a one class period. Um, and as I was mentioning before, that you have students who might in the first five minutes um, to say, we, we have all our rights, we're done. Well, first of all, I don't let them glue their rights or paste their rights on their big chart paper until I have come by and confirmed uh, that it, ha it is a unanimous decision. And then I throw in um, a discussion to try to provoke um, a, a bigger discussion to have them go back and think about things. So for example, what we are talking about um, not having free, sp having free speech but not having free assembly, how would you do that? And kind of going back and negotiating a little bit more. Um, and then when they're done, they'll glue their final five rights on, they can hang it on the wall, and then they can report back uh, to you, the teacher, and you can do a tally. And you'll see some pretty interesting trends like we saw, like, hmm, why is it that out of the five groups, three chose the right to bear arms and two did not? Or, you know, um, why majority of the people figured, decided that, like you all, we don't need an attorney. So being able to have that discussion as a larger group is also important. And here are a couple of debrief questions that um, we usually ask the students. What rights were easy to give up? Why? How would our society be different if we were limited just to five rights? Um, and, it, and what important or surprising things did you learn about the Bill of Rights or Constitution today? Uh, I have some other questions like looking at the chat. Now, could we add more, few, a few more to those 11? Of course, absolutely you could do so. Um, those are based on the Bill of Rights and then we added the equal protection as well. Um, but you're certainly, you should feel free to use this however it, it's helpful for you. Yeah, so. Oh, Laura wants me to jump in. So we have included also uh, for you know, common, to make this even more common core aligned, um, some writing assignments because again, after you have this great discussion, I want you to get students um, to really a good introduction to the Bill of Rights and how to discuss it and how to think about uh, the Bill of Rights. Um, obviously, you want to see like, what kind of uh, material can you get them to produce out of that um, with you know, writing. So we put up here five writing assignments. Um, you'll all get uh, copies of this. Um, writing assignment one, choose one of the amendments uh, in the Bill of Rights that you feel is most important and write a paragraph discussing why you think the right, uh, the right outline in that amendment is important or the rights uh, in that amendment are important. Um, so again, this is just totally based off of the discussions they would already have from this lesson. Um, you know, they really would be building upon that, that basis. Um, so, you know, one thing you always want students to, or not always, but often want students to do is engage in self-explanation and really, you know, putting, putting the amendment in their own words. Uh, I think I've found that really helps them to understand uh, things a little better. Um, you know, if you wanted to, again, these are all optional um, things that you can have students build off of the, uh, this lesson. Um, find one example in American history or in current events where the particular right you chose was especially important. Feel free to use examples from before the ratification of the Bill of Rights or from later periods of American history, uh, such as the Civil Rights Movement. Um, and then I, I think it's always important to have students discuss why that amendment might be important to, that, to, uh, to them. 
And certainly part of that should be a sort of because, like it's important because of, of this reason. So it really helps them to sort of personalize um, you know, an understanding of the Bill of Rights. Uh, writing assignment number two, uh, would you amend the Constitution? Obviously we can do so. And there's obviously lots of discussion. There's discussions right now about amending the Constitution. Uh, is there something you believe should be added to the Bill of Rights? Um, or you could say maybe even subtracted. Uh, did the Founding Fathers miss something? Uh, write a paragraph detailing your new amendment and discuss why it is important. Uh, in one paragraph, clearly to state your new amendment and why you think it would be a valuable right to add to the Constitution. Um, and you may want to research or take into consideration other ideas that have been proposed to the U.S. Constitution or that have been included in constitutions of other nations. Um, I think in the slide uh, that we'll send all of you, there's some notes about some other um, national constitutions that have some different understanding of rights um, that uh, you know you can absolutely have discussions with the students or they should at least consider. I have a question. What's missing? I don't, you could say, uh, I think, you know, a right to work. Is that something that could be included in the Constitution? I'm not advocating that or not, but that's something that people discuss. Or how about a right to health care? And yes, uh, you will be able to adapt the slides. You'll have the PowerPoints and you'll be able to uh, download them and be able to adapt them because depending on what age level you're working with um, or what the current background of the students are as far as content-wise, um, you will be able to adapt the slides uh, in a way that works best for your classroom. And the third writing assignment. Oh, writing assignment number three. Uh, write one paragraph discussing what you think our society would look like uh, without the Bill of Rights. Uh, so that's just a rephrase, or a rephrasing basically of our original questions that go all the way back to our beginning. Um, and so, yeah, write one sentence stating your opinion and a reason or reasons. A Bill of Rights was necessary or not necessary to add to the Constitution. Um, write two to four sentences describing what you think a society would look like without a Bill of Rights. Uh, and then discuss an example from your personal experience that is impacted by the Bill of Rights. Uh, does the protections offered to individuals help you? Does it harm you? Make sure to explain why. Um, so again, just you, once you have students engage in a discussion, you want them to be engaging in critical thinking uh, and writing uh, about the material that you cover, uh, especially after they've looked at the text and understand the text. Uh, and it's something, again, that they can use um, complex text, in this case the Bill of Rights, um, to engage in what, what amounts to their own scholarly approach. I mean, these are all things that scholar, constitutional scholars deal with. So it really allows students to engage in that same uh, activity. Right. And, and Haven, what I would say about privacy, I mean, it's, it's really against government intrusion, right? That's what the Founding Fathers were talking about during the Fourth Amendment. They didn't want the government to um, have an intrusion necessarily, necessary intrusion into our, into our uh, lives and, and, you know, searches and uh, against unlawful searches and seizures and, and so forth. So I think it's definitely something to, to cover with them because I think it's something that students see a lot of. Uh, Barbara has this would be a good launch activity, writing assignment three. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we obviously started the, this off with a discussion uh, question. It's something that students can uh, certainly think about, and it allows them to be creative. Um, I certainly encourage students to be creative uh, with this type of assignment. Great. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much. We're getting to the conclusion of the webinar. Thank you so much for uh, participating and submitting all your great comments. Um, I wanted to bring up a couple of things. One, um, that we do have a series of upcoming webinars. Um, so I highlighted a couple here. We're doing one on our civic action project, uh, great for government teachers. We're doing another one on using Supreme Court cases to teach common core standards. And we'll have um, the law, Irvine, UCI, Law School Dean Erwin Cherinsky there uh, to give you a little preview of what's coming out in the Supreme Court. Um, next, we have If Men Were Angels, Teaching the Constitution with the Federalist Papers. Then uh, the Common Core, doesn't have to be a great wall. Um, that'll be a lesson on ancient China. Then we have Civic Engagement and Writing. Um, so mm -hmm. using more writing um, in our government classes. And then um, teaching primary sources and making it Exciting. So those will be our upcoming webinar series. Please, I'll send you a link, but we have it up here. Um, please make sure you register for those. Some are um, will be offering stipends for attending, so please take a look at those.
And then lastly, just thank you so much. Um,